Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech, and in today's video, we're going to be having a look at the power consumption of gaming PCs overall. Now, since there's no specific way to test the amount of power that a component uses, I'm going to be testing what the whole system uses. And I'm going to be using a plug that you actually just plug into the wall socket and then plug your PC into. So this is a standard three pin at UK wattage meter. This measures up to 2,900 watts. And what are we going to what I'm going to be doing in this test is testing many graphic cards and CPU combinations to see how that affects the power draw from the wall. So I'm going to be testing the NAN50, which will be a review of very soon, and my own personal GTX 980, and also the R9 380 that I did get sent over from XFX a few weeks ago. So, so we're going to be testing these on my own i7 um, 40, um, yeah, 4790K and then also on an i5 4690K to see how that kind of changes the amount of power draw. And also when I'm testing the 950, I might test that with an i3 since I think an i3 is what many people are going to be having these days with a 950 since it's not exactly the most high-end card in the world. Anyhow, let's get on with it and yeah, let me guys start off by telling you my system specifications. So guys, that as mentioned, I'll be using a power meter that plugs into the main socket and measures the wattage that passes through the actual plug. The graphics cards I'm going to be using for this test are the MSI variant of the GTX 950, an XFX Black Edition variant of the R9 380, and finally an EVGA Superclock variant of the GTX 980 chip. This covers a wide range of graphic cards and should create a healthy looking chart once populated. As sort of a specs, these are on the screen. For the CPU, I'll be using the i7 4790K as a quad-core chip with hyper-threading. Its stock clock is 4GHz with a turbo 4.4. And in addition to the i7, I'll be testing an i5 4690K. This chip is, of course, less powerful. However, similar to the i7, but without hyper-threading and has a slightly lower clock of 3.5GHz with a turbo of 3.9GHz. Testing these two CPUs should cover what most people are gaming with these days and should create a healthy look and chart at the end. Also, for the game, I'll be playing Battlefield 4. This utilises modern processors and graphic cards pretty well as it uses a grid engine and, and has had many updates throughout the years to further optimise the title. So to get started on the testing, first up for the i7 installed on the rig, paired with the GTX 980, and jumping into Battlefield, on average it looks like the PC looks to be pulling around 340 watts. All tests are done playing 10 minutes of the game and averaging out the amount of watts pulled. Next up for the i5 4690K installed, the average power looks to have dropped around 20 watts to 320 watts total, and really shows even a high-end system featuring the i7 and the GTX 980 don't need that much power when running modern games. Next up is the i9-380 from AMD. Now AMD have always been known to have more power hungry cards, however when testing the 380 in my system, it only seems to be pulling around 310 watts. Although this is close to the 340 watts that the 980 was pulling, the 980 is a very powerful and expensive card in comparison, so not too sure how I feel about these power figures. When switching out the CPU for the i5, power consumption seems to have dropped around 25 watts, dropping to 285 watts total. We saw a very similar drop in power when the 980 was installed. And lastly, for the GGX 950 from MSI, total power consumption with the i7 installed looks to be around 230 watts, a very large drop in power consumption in comparison to the other cards. Although this card is an entry level 1080p gaming card, I didn't expect it to draw this little from the power supply. Now when installing the i5 power figures dropped yet again around 30 watts, making the system draw exactly 200 watts. Now as I was so impressed with this power figure, I decided to test the card running with a dual core i3, the 4170. This chip has a mere two cores with four threads and a conservative 3.7 gigahertz base clock with no turbo. Jumping, jumping back into the game on Battlefield 4 it looks to be pulling 20 watts less than the i5 at a mere 180 watts total. Very impressed considering it gains very well at pushing out those frames on Battlefield 4. Full review of this card coming very very soon. So guys, there we are. That's the power consumption of gaming PCs overall. Do you need a 1000 watt or even an 850 watt power supply like I have? Absolutely not. Now have you seen as you've seen, the NAND50 and the i3 draws little as 180 watts. That is, that's incredible. It really, really is. Um, I can't say like 200 watt power supplies exist, but if they did, you could even get away with that. Uh, on a gaming machine, which is very, very impressive. Now, in terms of the 980 and also the i7 4790K, it looks like you're pulling around 340 watts, as I've shown you, and that, to me, is quite surprising. I would have thought it would have been somewhere like the 400, 500, but I suppose when I, you know, do take a step back and kind of look at the power consumption of the 980, which is only about 160 watts, it does seem very, very reasonable, and even with the amount of drives and fans that I have in my rig, um, yeah, 300, 340 watts, it's, it's really not a lot, and I thought it would have been a lot more, so yeah, it's been very interesting to check out the power consumption of gaming PCs, and 
Um, I hope that you guys have learned something from this. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment and all sorts, subscribe. And ooh, now in my outro, I now do include uh, the links to my social media, so Facebook and also Twitter, since I should, I should be using them, shouldn't I? Anyhow, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.